generally speaking. This is going to like illustrate something about body lock passing that makes it very effective. So, jump, I need to jump on your So, um, just go flat on your back. Okay, so, <clears throat> when, when we're trying to pass someone's guard, obviously, we all know, a guard pass is culminated when we get past their legs. Okay, but let's talk about like, why is that the case? When you get past someone's legs, what, what you've done is, you've gotten past the strongest pushing surface of his body when he's on the floor, right? So he can obviously push with his arms or with his legs. He can even push to some extent with his, with his head, okay, at different angles, right? But when he's on his back, um, it's really mainly his legs and his arms, okay? If I get past his legs, right, past his guard, it's very hard for him with just his arms to push me away from his torso, and I can start pinning him and stuff like that. Right? So this is, obviously this is pretty obvious, but we always want to have this in the back of our mind when we think about guard passing, uh, especially body lock passing. Okay, so if I'm doing, let's say, a knee, uh, just a regular a knee cut or whatever, right? And I'm here, right? You'll notice that what I'm trying to do is get my chest to his chest. And ideally, what I'm going to have is as much inside position as possible past his knees. Okay? So if you see my right arm, this would be a lot better than this, right? If I'm trying to pass through the lines, right? Um, and, and if he has frames, this is also going give to me, give me problems, right? So I'm going to control the space between the top of his thighs and his torso. Because if I can control this space, I can limit his ability to push me away with his legs, which is the strongest pushing surface of his body, especially when he's on his back. Okay. Now with a knee cut, or if many, this is just an example, or with many other types of passes, I can drive towards him, but he can always push me, and it's pretty easy for him to get his legs back involved. Okay? What makes body locks so effective is that it's probably the best way to make sure that he can't push the, my, I'll say my upper body with his legs as I pass his guard, right? So his legs are still in front of me. Right? But all he can do with them is push my legs. He's not pushing my upper body. Okay. So I've gotten my upper body past the push, pushing surface of his body when he's on his back. Okay? So here, or I should say the strongest pushing surface, right? Here, all he can do is push with his hands. Even his hands, we're going to see, like, you guys know this a trapping arm. There's ways to mitigate his ability to push with his hands um, with a body lock as well. But even if, he, even if he did have both hands, this is not going to be anywhere near as strong as his legs, right? So that's what's so powerful about body locks. When you first get a body lock, okay, it's not super important to me, if you look at my hands, how far my right arm is across the back at first. Because we're going to eventually we do want a long arm and a short arm, but at first I don't really care. Okay? It's easy to adjust that at a later point. Okay. What's more important is where my hand is relative to his spine up and down. Okay? The higher up it is, the more defensive options he has. Okay, we're going to talk more about those later. Um, but for now, let's just try to get our hands as low as we can. Okay? But when we, get, <clears throat> when we get low with our hands, let's make sure that our hips don't also sink low. Okay, so yes, my, my upper body is low, but if my hips are low, that's not good. Here, I don't really have a very good base. What I want you to do is get your hands low, but keep your hips relatively high. Okay, so if I sink my hips down, that's not good. Okay, so I go here, like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my hands over one of his arms. Okay, we want to trap one arm. Now when I connect my hands, we can do it in a pretty wide variety of ways. Connect with a 10 finger grip. I can clasp my hands like so, whatever you want. Uh, a lot of that's going to depend on how big his torso is, how long your arms are. Okay? Now I want to put my face, <clears throat> if you look at his pectoral muscle, I want my cheek turned so it's touching his pectoral muscle. 
this is very significant, okay? So I'm sure when I'm walking around correcting you guys, I'm gonna have to fix this a lot because this is uh, more significant than you might immediately think, okay? If I wanna trap an arm, which we're gonna talk about, this is a very important part of body lock passing, okay? If I wanna trap an arm, okay, if my head is in the center, there's too much space now for Joe. He can pretty easily, even though it's easy, but really, really tight, uh, take your right arm outside. Yeah, it's really easy for him to do that. That's if I put my head in the center. So I want to put my head on the side to close off that space to actually trap this arm. But I don't want my head too high because then it's hard to get my hands low where I want. I mean, I can get them low, but not effectively. Okay, so I want to be here. What I want you to basically think of is take your cheek, put it on the side of his pectoral muscle, and look at his shoulder with your like if this cheek is touching his pec, I want this eye to be looking at his shoulder. Usually I'll close this eye, right? So I'm gonna be like this here, okay? This is also gonna give us a really useful ability to control the shoulder, okay? So we go in, my hands are low, I connect my hands, I put my face at uh, like my cheek at his pectoral muscle, and I'm looking at his shoulder with my left eye. Okay, and I usually close my right eye. Now what I'm gonna do here is not drive in. Because if I drive in here, keep a uh, strong butterfly hooks. If I drive in here, okay, I'm giving him momentum for sweep options. Okay, so stay right here. So if you look at this space between his heels and his hips, okay? Insofar as he has a good amount of space there, he has like leverage with his legs that he can push. Okay? If I allow him, like if I drive into him, I'm creating momentum towards him where he has the ability to push. Okay, and then we're gonna look at these, there's a, there's a butterfly sweep we're gonna look at later to deal with a body lock, and we're giving him the ability to do that. So when I connect my hands, a very big detail is you don't drive in right away, you pull his hips to his heels. So now if you look at his hips and his heels, they're tight together. I didn't achieve that by driving in. I achieved that by pulling the hips to the heels. Okay, so when you connect your hands, the first thing you want to do, if you get your hands connected strong, pull the hips to the heels. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take an asymmetrical sprawl. Okay, um, so, hold on a second. So, um, I'm going to take this hip here, and I'm going to turn it towards the floor. Okay, so if you look at my my leg here, if my leg just goes straight back, right, this is not what we want to do, okay? My hip is still very open here. I want to close my head, okay? Um, I don't want to close it so much that I'm on my side because obviously he's just going to flip me over, but <clears throat> I want to close enough that his butterfly hook loses power. I'll show you guys from another angle. I think of it, it's like, so it's not this guy, it's this. Okay, and my other leg is gonna step up. Okay, so let's, let's, let's uh, put your back on the floor to keep strong our legs. Yeah, so let's just look at the sprawling action, uh, independent of everything else. So look at my, with my right leg, guys. So when I sprawl, I have to keep a close stretch action. When I sprawl, I close my hip, and it makes it very hard, just as strong as you can remember. Yeah. It makes it very hard for him to keep his hook. If I just bring my legs straight back, I'm not doing anything to his butterfly hook. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Because my hip, my hip remains just as open as it was before. This is, this is a vital mistake. I see all the time, okay? I see this all the time. Even like black belts do this. They will, they'll, I don't wanna do this hard on you. They'll do this like really hard, kicking their leg back really hard to try to strip the butterfly hook. And, and sometimes it can work if you're big enough and athletic enough. Um, but that's not, that's not the technical way to be doing this. The way you wanna do this is, like I can do this with no power and, and it'll work, right? I just close my hip. Okay? So we just close our hip, 
like so. It makes it very hard for him to keep the butt up the hook. And even if he does keep it, it's not going to be very effective at off balancing me. Okay? Let's just try again. Very, very hard for him to keep that butterfly hook effectively. Okay? He might keep it, he still has it, right? But it's it's not very it's not very useful. Okay, so let's come back up. So let's let's start off with this, okay? So we go in, we connect our hands. To take your time with this, don't rush it. Put your cheek at his pack muscle and look at his shoulder. Now we connect our hands nice and low. Now I'm gonna pull the hips to the heels. And now I'm going to sprawl asymmetrically. So my right leg goes back and the hip closes. Then I step my left leg out. Okay, one more time. You see here, I'm going to sprawl. So I close my right hip and I step my left leg out. Okay, makes sense, guys? Yes, all right, let's go to the try. One, two, three. So again, let, let's look at uh, what I'm going to do with my torso without the body lock in place. So, Joe, just put your, uh, put your back on for it. Just keep, keep closer. Okay, so I'm going to show it without the body lock so you can kind of see more clearly what's happening with my, my hips and stuff. Again, remember we pull the hips. We're going to pull the hips to the heels. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have the body lock, but let's just keep that habit good. Now, we're going to make our asymmetrical sprawl. At the same time as we do this, actually, come on, uh, can you put your hands on the At the same time as we do this, I'm going to do something with my head and with my torso. Okay, so uh, with my head, remember I told you guys to put your cheek at his pec muscle. When I say his pec muscle, let's be clear, I mean like right here. Uh, it could, you know, this is also his pec muscle, but I should say the top of the pec muscle. Because what I want you guys to have is an angle where, if you see where my head is now, see how my forehead is hitting his shoulder? This is what we want. I don't want this, I don't want this. I wouldn't want this. this. This is okay, but this is the best. My forehead is touching the shoulder. Now what I can do, so don't, don't give me any resistance. I have no resistance. I can push the shoulder down. Just, just keep going. I can push the shoulder down the way I want it to go down. Okay? At the same time as I'm pushing the shoulder down with my forehead, okay, I'm going to push down the leg and the, specifically the, the angle of the knee with my torso. Okay? So what we don't want to have happen is this. I'll just hold that. When I make my asymmetrical sprawl, I don't want this. This is very bad. Okay? Because it's kind of obvious, he could easily sumigashi sweep me here. Okay? I, I have no, I don't want to say no balance, but I don't have very good balance. What I want is when I sprawl, I also want to be pushing down the knee through the inner thigh with my torso. So now here, the angle here, it's not very good for him to sweep me. And it's going to be much easier for me to step over, which is, we're, don't worry about that now, we're going to talk about that later, but just know like that's, we're going to build up to that, okay? For now, all I want you to focus on <coughs> is getting the knee pointed basically towards the wall. We don't want it pointed towards the ceiling, okay? We're going to look at two main ways to do this. The first way we're going to look at, at doing it right now is by pushing it with our, our torso, okay? Later, we're also going to start using our arms, but we want to first learn how to use our torso to be able to do this, okay? If you can use your torso to do it, you should always use your torso to do it, okay? Uh, again, that's something we're going, to, we're going to come back to later, okay? So, now let's look at it with the body lock. So, remember guys, go over the arm, catch your hands, pull his hips in. Now, if you look at where my head is, my forehead's right in the shoulder. Look at the angle of his, basically the entire right side of his body. That's, that's this side, guys. Look at the angle of the right side of his body uh, as I push it down. So I sprawl on my right side, and now my left leg steps up, and look how I push down the right side of his body, okay? So his knee is not here. This would, uh, this would not be very good. This is very, very bad for me. I want this. Now here, this is pretty solid. I've got a very good control of the inside position at his hips, so he can't really push my upper body with his legs. I'm controlling one of his arms, so he can't push me with that arm, okay? And I've got his knee low, so 
you know, we're going to be able to move to a half guard, which is something we're going to look at next. Okay, but for now, let's just get this. Let's get this skill down first. Okay, because this is this is a little bit tricky if you've never done it before. <clears throat> so if you look at what I'm doing without a person, so I'm sprawling asymmetrically, and the sprawling action, guys. Don't bring the leg back and then close the hip. You want to close the hip as the leg's going back. So this is what I mean by that. If you, if you look at my right leg, <clears throat> if the leg goes back and then I close the hip, that's okay, but it's not that good because this, uh, so you go right here. So keep the hip keep, uh, back from the foot and keep the hooks very strong here. So if my leg goes back and then I close the hip, he still has a pretty good purchase on my inside of my hip with his foot, okay? Because I closed at a later stage in the sprawl. I want to basically I want to close it. I, I want to close it as I start to sprawl, right? So uh, look at my right, right. How it closes as it goes back. That looks like the hook. Versus if I just go back, then I close. It might do it, but it's going to be harder to keep the hook strong. So look, he's got strong hooks here. I bring my leg back. He's got that grip with his foot. But if I close it first, then I bring the leg back. And then I push down. Let's go back over here. And then I push down, push down at the thigh here with my torso, right? So I fly the floor again. So I bring my leg back, strong hooks. I bring my leg back, I sp uh, sprawl. And now look what happens with my chest. Do you guys see what like my chest and torso is doing? I'm pushing it this way, okay? So <clears throat> you can practice this also. Feel free to practice this without the body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A quick question. So, so your, your right leg, as it's turning, it's also, it seems like your inner thigh is pushing against his, his foot uh, to get that hook out as well? Um, not really. It's mm -hmm. just like the closing action of my hip. If, that, okay. if that's happening, it's like incidental. The main thing I want you to focus on is closing the hip. Yeah, I'm not like deliberately focused on pushing the, the ankles already by the hip by the, it's doing we, it. we pulled the hips to the heels, like that's what already got it there. I'm not like, I'm not like thinking about pushing the ankle in more to the mm -hmm. hip, although I mean that is happening by the yeah. sprawl, but it's not like something I'm focused on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, so, okay, so, um, yeah, okay, so uh, strong hooks. So guys, again, I'm going to asymmetrically sprawl on my, my right side. And then I'm gonna push down on my left, his right side, with my upper body, okay? Like so. Okay, and again, my head stays passively sleepy. So when I'm doing it with the body, like my head's gonna be right here, okay? Like so. I can't pull the hips in, like so. And this is, this is a really good position for us to work from. Okay, let's focus on Practicing getting to this position first, and then we're going to talk about what to do when we get here. Okay. okay, so, and again, guys, feel free, practice this if you if you want without the body lock first, right? You can have your partner go flat on his back. You can keep, make sure if you're on bottom, keep strong butterfly hooks, okay? If he can't strip the hooks, he's not doing it right. So don't, don't, don't make it easy for him, okay? So you can practice. I close my right hip and I sprawl, and I push. So this here, this is okay. This is disastrous. <laughs> this is better. Okay. okay, this is what we want, okay? Practice that, so, and I do that by, it's also my legs are walking this way. So I'm sort of walking to this side, right? Think of, but again, I think of it as my torso pushing this. Okay, that's the main thing I focus on. And, and you know, the legs are walking outside as well. Yep, yeah, question. Are you kind of like sliding down the body as you're doing this? No, okay. do not do that. Do not do that. Yeah, so let's go back. So remember, remember what I said about the hips in the beginning? You don't want this to happen. I don't want this. This is very bad. Okay, we're going to talk about this later. If, he, if I do this, guys, if I do this, he can really easily push my head. Push my hip? Yeah, and he can maybe even guillotine me. Yeah, guillotine? Yeah. We don't want that, obviously, right? That would be, that would be bad. So don't do that. No. Just, uh, don't think about sinking the body low, because then your head's also going to sink. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you, you want to just, 
focus on you pull the hips to the heels and keep your head like right about here. Does that make sense? So keep your head right about here. Now I'm going to scroll. Yeah, there's no need to sink any lower. If the more I sink, even if I already, like here, he can't really do anything me, but he definitely could take your left hand, push me off to the side with my head. You could do stuff like this, maybe get, his, <coughs> get your leg over the top. He could start omoplatting me, rubber guard, go plata, whatever, right? Uh, there's a lot of danger there if my head sinks too low. Does that make sense? Yeah, good question. In my opinion, the highest percentage way to use a body lock to actually pass the guard is by moving into a half guard. Okay, so it's not the only way you can pass with a body lock, but it's in my opinion the highest percentage way because most people who are good are gonna try to, when you start threatening body lock passes and you're, you're beating their legs, they're gonna move into different versions of half guard to try to beat you with that, okay? So um, another thing that can happen is you can, and this is the back. you can go into situations like this where the leg is shelved, okay? We're, we'll talk about this a little bit today, but we're gonna mainly focus on passing through a half guard, okay? So, so if, you're, if you're seated, okay, so we, we capture the arm, we connect our hands, I pull the hips in, I make my asymmetrical sprawl, I push down the knee. Now, <clears throat> let's turn here. The next step, Okay, is going to be dependent upon uh, basically two different things. The first is, did he maintain his left side butterfly hook or not? You see here, he, he did it, right? So that's going to give us one direction. The second thing is going to be how, um, <coughs> how close is his ankle to his hips? Okay, how close are his ankle to his hips? If his ankle is very, very close to his hips, we're going to move into shelving the ship. Okay, we'll talk about that later. That's not my preference, and also it's not what I think better people from his perspective normally do. Like if I'm on bottom, I don't, I don't want to do this. Okay, if I'm on bottom, I'm going to try to take a half guard at this point. Okay, if they, if they beat my knee. Okay, which is what we, we actually have to do that first time. Yeah, anyway. <clears throat> so, if there's space between the ankle and the hamstring, Okay, what we're going to look to do, and I'm going to show this without the body lock first again so you can see it clearly, then I'll show it with the body lock. What we're going to look to do is get what we call inside ankle position. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to take my right leg, put it inside the ankle, and then we're going to push the ankle to, uh, like backwards. When the ankle goes backwards, the knee will also go backwards. Okay, so what we're trying to do ultimately so he wants to be tight here. I want to get my leg into this space, okay? Which we understood earlier, if I can control the space between his upper thigh and his torso, he can't push me with his legs, okay? So what I want to do is, he wants to block it off. I want to put my leg into that space. It's very simple, right? I want to move into my half leg, okay? If the knee is very high towards his shoulder, it's more difficult to get into that space. If the knee's very high and it's pointed to the ceiling, it's, it's almost impossible, okay? We want the knee as low down as we can, and then we want to pull it this way. That makes it very, very easy to get over. Because what you're doing is you're expanding the space between his upper thigh and his torso. When you expand that space, obviously the bigger a target is, the easier it is to hit it, right? So um, how are we going to do that in this situation? We're going to do that by getting, again, what we call inside ankle position. So keep the knee right here. So you guys see where my right leg is? See how I'm inside the ankle? Right? So now here, if my uh, right leg pushes back, see how it pushes the, uh, the knee back as well? Yeah. Now, obviously guys, we also have to be cautious here to some degree because I am extending my body and that is going to make my base a little bit weaker. Okay, so let's, let's be clear about that, right? We don't want to do this for a very long period of time. What I want, and we're gonna, I'm going to talk specifically about how to do this. What I want is to just get here, push the ankle back, and then step over. And then once I'm here, I'm going to move into a much more stable position. We'll, we'll talk about that next. For now, let's just talk about getting above the knee. And then next, we'll talk about moving into a more stable position 
You're going to want to do that right away, but let's just separate those two parts, okay? So now let's look at it with a body lock. Here, seated up. We connect our hands, pull his hips in, and go here. I'm going to come back. Sometimes he'll just give you, some, because sometimes he just he wants to take a half guard. If he doesn't want to take a half guard, but there's still space between his ankle and his hamstrings, just take your right leg up, put the knee inside, and now turn the, so, put the knee inside. Now, if you guys see my right knee, I'm going to turn it this way. So I'm closing my hip. Okay? Does this make sense, guys? Right? If at any point I feel like I can just step over, that's what I'm going to do. Okay? But let's assume it's a little bit, uh, he's bringing the knee to the shoulder. Yeah. And that's it. So come back and bring the knee down. If you feel like maybe it's hard to get the knee inside, you can probably just step the, your leg over. Right? So, if he's going this way, it's easier usually to get your knee inside the neck. Right? If he's, if you feel like you're like, I can't really get inside, you probably just step over. This is going up. So up here. So he's bringing the knee to the shoulder. That gives me a good angle. I insert my knee. And I am sort of on my side, so you got to be careful here. Now, uh, once I get the knee inside, I'm going to turn my body and line it up with his, and I'm going to extend my right leg back. Then I step my left leg over. Okay? And now from here, let's just put the knee down and then stop, and we'll look at the next step when we come back. Okay? But for now, let's just focus on let's just focus on understanding this concept inside ankle position and making use of it to get the knee where we want it to move into a half guard. Okay, so, so again, so just, uh, just set up here first. Okay, so we're here, everything's tight, knees to shoulders, knees to shoulders. So we got here, and what I'm gonna do now is I see, okay, I beat the butterfly hook on the left side, and there's space between the heel and the hamstring on the near side. So I'm going to take my knee, put it inside the ankle, and then make sure that your, your leg is positioned here where I can push the ankle back. Right now I'm here. I'm not really going to push the ankle back. But if I go here, now I will. Okay, so now I'm going to straighten out my body with his, and I'm going to push by extending my leg back. And you see my toes are in the mat. And now, it's very easy for me to step over. Okay, trying to get my knee, my left knee, to my elbow. And I step over, and I capture this space with my heel. Now, I just put my uh, leg down. And I look on the right side of his body. I'm controlling the space between his upper thigh and his torso with my left leg. And on the left side of his body, I'm doing so with my arm. Okay? Does this make sense, guys? Yes? Do we want to see it again or we're good? Uh, one one more yeah. Okay, so. So I go in. Sorry, I go here. See how I like move, move my knee in? It's not always going to be the same thing, guys, right? Like sometimes it's going to be kind of different. You can pick your leg up. Put it inside. Sometimes you're going to slide it in. Just whatever angle you need to get your kick hook stronger. Sometimes I slide it. Right, sometimes I pick it up. Now, here, when I bring it back, my right leg, I want to, so I'm on my hip basically. I'm going to go on my knees. So straighten out your body. Now, I can extend my left leg, I can step over. And guys, another detail, let's just turn it this way. Look at, look at my hands here. I don't have a long arm. If at any point you are not able to get a long arm, when I do this, and I step over, and you move to a head right here, it's going to create a long arm or it's going to create an opportunity for one. Okay, so if at this point you don't have one yet, it's going to be easy to get one as you move into the half guard. As your arm goes from the center of the spine, you're going to have a chance to punch it across. Okay? 
All right, let's give this a try. One, two, three. Okay, so let's talk about uh, two more ways we can get into the half guard against a very, very like tight uh, guard. Okay, so I'll jump over here. Okay, so again, I'll show this first. I'll, I'll show this first without the body lock, so you can kind of see more clearly what's happening. Okay, so uh, let's say I was able to get inside ankle position. So let's go flat. Let's say I was able to get inside ankle position, but the knee is he's got a really good knee to elbow, knee to shoulder connection. Like there's very little space here, even though I'm pushing the ankle back. Right? Sometimes it's really, really tough. Okay? Two more ways, and you can also use these two methods together. Okay? Two more ways we can get above the knee here is I can slide my knee up to his knee. That makes it easier to go here. There's an obvious risk, okay? What do you guess like the risk is? I'm like straight on my side. Like this is, if he just like sort of bridges this way. That, that can happen. So when you do this, two things. First, don't do it very long. Go here, get over, and then we're going to talk about moving into a top tilt half guard next. The other thing is, when I go here, be ready with your hand. So I've got a tight waist, but if he turns me that way, post, right? Like you've got to, you've got to keep a base. Unfortunately, if he's if he's smart, he might do that post, and then he take, he he might uh, like push me the other way, and then start pushing push across my chest, right? Yeah, and he might start making space and get his. Uh, right. Maybe get his knee inside, maybe he goes so a butterfly sits up. That can be a way for him to get out, right? So, but obviously it's better than letting him sweep you, right? It would be better to base and give him a chance to regard than get swept, right? So I'm here. Uh, let's turn this way so you can see. So we're here. I've got my tight waist where I have a full body lock, whatever. I have inside ankle position. It's not enough. I can slide the knee up. That'll help me step this left leg over the knee, okay? First thing, don't stay here too long. Second thing, be ready to base with your right hand on the side. Now, the other way that we can also use in conjunction with the knee to knee method, the other way I can try to get above the knees, I can use a, a short hook here. So a long arm, short arm, and then we would call this a short hook, okay, or a T-Rex arm. Okay, so, so if I have, a, let's say, a tight waist, so we've got a tight waist here, I can unlock my hands and go here. When we do this, guys, I'm not doing this. Okay, I'm going like this. I take my elbow and bring it towards my hip and I bend my wrist. Did you guys see the hook that I created? This is much stronger. Because what I'm doing here is, I, it's not like I'm pushing with my arm. Okay? I'm essentially using this as an extension of my torso. Okay, so it's the structure of my arm. Okay, and I'm using, again, I'm not pushing with my arm. I mean, I literally am, but it's not the strength of my arm. It's as if my arm is now, like, the power of my torso is going through my arm. Versus here, this is just the power of my arm. Does that make sense, guys? Like, this is, I'm just pushing with my hand. Right, it's just the power of my arm. It's not that strong. I go here, this is the entire torso uh, working in unison. Much, much stronger. So I'm here, I hook, and now I can step over. Okay, and then from here, we would have to, we're gonna start looking at moving into the top tilt to half guard, and there's a whole set of things associated with that. Um, but uh, we'll look at that next, okay? Make sense, guys? Okay, so again, <laughs> you can practice. If pushing back with my leg is not enough, it's just not getting the job done on its own. I can go here, and or I can do this in unison with knee to knee position. I try to not do knee to knee position if I can, because obviously there's a big risk involved, right? The short hook is it's just not as risky, okay? Now, if his left leg is over the top, at a very high level of rubber guard, if you're here and you go to a short hook, there are more risks because when you need this knee to your face, you could get caught in a triangle, right? So maybe there, so take it over. Maybe here, you're better off 
So when he needed me. He's here, it's, how's he gonna sweep me? Right, it's a lot tougher, right? So you gotta play it by ear, right? So the risk associated with like, the options are gonna be related to what he's doing as well, right? So if he's going to a rubber guard, maybe knee to knees, less risky. Uh, but usually, most of the time I find that the greater risk there is the knee to knee because most people are trying to like, sweep rather than move into rubber guard. But obviously you still have very flexible people that wanna play that, so you're gonna deal with that too. Okay, make sense guys? Mm -hmm. Yes? All right, let's give this a try. One, two, three. Back. Uh, yeah. we're gonna, now we're going to move into the top of the So we circle over here. Okay, so, uh, all right, so we, we got to a half guard. Okay, let's talk about the, the, the importance of the top tilt half guard. Okay, so uh, when I have a, a half guard without a knee shield, okay, there are a lot of dangers present to me. Okay, there are a lot of things he can do to me. Okay, uh, this is still a dangerous position for me. The way I'm going to mitigate most of these threats is by moving into what we call a top tilt half guard. Okay, initially my head should be on this side of his body. In this case, the uh, the right side of his body. Okay, in order to get above the knee. But once I've achieved this, we're going to move almost everything to the other side. So let's say, so bring your uh, hips up. So let's say about a body lock still. I've got a body lock, and I'm on this side. Now, I'm going to turn my left cheek to be on the other side, because I want to flatten your shoulders out. Now, I'm going to turn my hips so they're facing this way. And I take my uh, right knee off the floor, and my toes are in the mat. Okay? Let's, let's turn this way so you can see that. So let's just look at just, just my legs independent of the body for a second. So this is a top tilt. I have my toes in the mat, my right knee is off the floor, and my knees are facing towards his hips. Okay? Each of these three things deals with a different thing he might try to do to me. If my knees are faced towards him, my right knee will be on the floor, uh, he can John Wayne sweep me. Okay? If I turn my knees towards his hips, and my right knee's off the floor, very difficult for him to John Wayne sweep me. Okay? If my toes are not in the mat, like if I have the top of my toes in the, uh, in, in the mat, uh, don't do this hard. If he bridges into me, he can take me over very easily. Okay? But if I put my toes in the mat like this, he bridges into me, he can still get a little bit of power, but I can push back against his, his bridge, and usually he won't be able to take me over, okay? Additionally, if my knees are facing towards him, there's the, there's the John Wayne sweep threat, but also it's a lot easier for him, even if I'm very tight, to find ways to get this knee back inside or this knee back inside, okay? It's much, much easier, let's go over here. It's much, much easier uh, for him to find space to get back inside. If, uh, yeah, body up again. if I'm here, it's way harder for him to get that space. Okay? Now, what he can do is he can take a butterfly hook with his left leg. Okay? He can get this. Okay? But as we're going to see, it's not, it's not a big deal, actually. Okay? So, before we talk about passing the half guard, let's just practice the top tilt. Let's practice moving into the top tilt and feeling it a little bit, okay? So, I want to have my hands connected, and I should always have one long arm and one short arm. Okay, see how here, my right arm, it's a, it's a tight waist, and I, I can connect my hands as well. This is very crucial to this position. They definitely don't have your hands in the center, okay? So, we're here. I keep my head over here. This time, my head does not be, like before, I was very specific about where your head was. It's not as important here. It doesn't have to be <coughs> as specific a spot. Just generally on this side of his body to keep his shoulders flat, okay? Now, the higher up, it, it, it is towards his shoulders. The more you'll be, you'll be able to flatten him out for sure, but it doesn't have to be like right here, okay? It can be here as well. This is okay. okay? But just don't, don't be like this. I'm not controlling his shoulders whatsoever. Try to be relatively high towards his pec muscle. Okay, now, my feet are in the floor, my knees are turned towards his hips. Okay, don't do this. 
All right? We're not, my hip's not in the floor. My left hip, what I want you to think of it is I'm turning my hip to the floor, but it's not going to touch. As my left hip dips to the floor, my right knee will naturally come off the floor. Okay? So I wouldn't, I, if you think about it, I wouldn't really be able to dip my left hip towards the floor and keep my right knee on the floor. Unless, I was thinking, well, even if I flop, it's going to come off. So I go like this. So if you look at the angle, so look, my feet are going to kind of windshield wipe them out. And my knees face towards the hips. Okay? Does this make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay, good. This is very, very important, okay? To have a good half guard top, like, passing game, you want to have the ability, as soon as you get above this knee, as soon as you get above this knee, almost always I'm moving into a top tilt. Okay, where I tilt a little bit towards the floor, I dip a little bit towards the floor, I'm controlling the far side shoulder with my head, okay, I've got a long arm with my right arm, and my feet are positioned as such, with my toes in the mat, my right knee off the floor, and my uh, knees facing towards the hips. Okay, this is not good, this is good. Okay, make sense guys? Mm -hmm. Yes? All right, let's give this a try, one, two, three. Let's understand that there are two main ways to pass. We can either go through the half guard or over the half guard. And that's going to depend on what he's doing with his legs. Okay? If he has a butterfly half, okay, I'm not going to go through. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can, but mostly we're going to go over. And if he has a regular half guard, okay, unless you're shadow cat from the X-Men, you're going to have to go through his half guard. Okay? You can phase shift your leg through his thigh, feel free to do so, but I can't, so we're going to do that. Yeah, so, and understand, you're going to do that based on what he's doing, okay? Now, when we're passing through the half guard, that's what we're going to look at first. There are further two divisions of how you're going to do this. You can either do it with your knee or your ankle, leaving his half guard first, okay? So, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so now, a <clears throat> uh, uh, question some people have asked me, okay, when you get here, should you continue to try to trap the arm? It's very hard at this point, okay? Most of the time, he's going to probably be able to get his arm out, okay? From here, okay, we're going to have to deal with this, but first, let's talk about what I'm doing with my legs first, and, and then we'll talk about dealing with this arm, okay? So, uh, just say, what? we're here in the top tilt half guard. Now, what I want to try to do is get my left leg hooking inside here. You can see what my left leg is doing? I want to try to get my toes inside his hamstring here. Okay? So, if I can just sl uh, uh, slide my shin over the top and get this, I will. But, oftentimes, keep, keep, keep that. Oftentimes, okay? I'm going to have to line my spine up with his and use inside ankle position once again to push the knee low and the pummel is inside. Okay? Now, when I get this, I'm going to come back to the top shoulder. Okay, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my right leg out and now I'm going to walk my foot so my entire foot is flat. Now, I'm going to walk my leg up to his hip. And now I'm going to bring my upper body forward, keeping my left leg on the floor. Okay, now from here, it should be difficult for him to keep his legs locked. Okay, if he can keep his legs locked, if his legs are really, really long, okay, I'm going to walk my foot back, and my heel is out. Okay, do you guys see my uh, right heel? Now you can push and open up the legs the rest of the way. So from the beginning, the ankle is over the top of my ankle. Okay? I'm here. We're in a top tilt. I recenter my spine with his and I extend my right leg back. Now I'm going to pummel my left leg over the top, like so. If I can get that pummel right here, I will. Okay? But if I find can't get it, you can line up, extend, pummel, and then come back. 
Okay? Now, I'm going to extend my right leg again. So here, his foot's kind of on the floor. For me to get out here, it's hard. So I extend my right leg, my hips come up a little bit. I'm lifting this leg here, essentially, right? So we're lifting that up so I can go here. Now I'm going to walk this foot up. Now I'm going to lean forward. That will usually pop his legs open. Okay? But if it doesn't, I bring my heel back. And now my heel is out. Okay? And I can use that to push and open the legs. And then lean forward again. Regardless, so let's just say, we got legs over here. Let me have that time list. Regardless, from here, now what I'm going to do is, uh, once I've got his legs open, I'm going to take my right leg, the ankle comes on top of my left calf. Then I flop my left calf out. Now all he has is my right knee. You can't really hold on to that. I take the leg out, and I move into a pass. Okay? And you have a tight waist, meaning it's going to be very easy to maintain this pass. Okay, so it's easy to, to get the score. Okay? Okay, let's go back. Again, we're here. If I can get this right away, I will. But if I can't, I'll recenter out my spine, pummel here. Now, I extend my right leg. Keep the gym up here. Yeah. I extend my right leg. Now, I go here with my foot, and I walk my foot up. Think of, so for my right foot, guys, let's turn this way. Oh, go flat. Think of your foot here, guys. Each half of my foot is like its own foot. So it's going to walk like that, right? So I'm going to walk it up. Now from here, I'm going to lean forward, open up his legs. If that's not enough, I take my leg back, but I don't take it back here. I take it back. Here, so my heel is out. Mm -hmm. Now, I can pop the legs open, pummel my right leg over, and both legs will out. That is an example of an ankle first method of passing through the half leg. Okay, that's ankle first. Okay, let's, let's go back. Now, what if he is just exceptionally strong and you cannot open up his legs no matter what you do? Okay, he's just really, really, really strong. Let's go flat. Flat. Good. I'm going to go here. I'm still, I'm still able to get here, but whatever I do, you know, whatever, whatever stage along the process, he slows me down. I just can't get things going. Opening up. Okay, make, make friends. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, okay, when he frames, I'm going to take my left arm. I'm going to go over his tricep. See how it's under? I'm going to go over, and I'm going to reconnect my body lock and dip my shoulder in, pinning his wrist to his chest. Okay? Now, I'm going to take my uh, right leg, I'm going to straighten it out, and I'm going to lean forward. I'm going to walk my knee up, 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 until my knee is out. And then I'm going to use both my hooks to flatten him out. From here, I'm going to pummel across to a knee on the belly and hold. Or bring my hips forward, flop both legs out, and go to a mouth. Again, we're here in a half bird, a top tilt half bird, and I just I can get this hook, but I cannot open anything up. It's he's just too strong. I'm gonna relock the bottom, I'm gonna go over and relock. So I'm under the elbow, I go over. So I'm using my shoulder to push the wrist in and I connect my hands. So now when he goes to push with that, he really can't. If I tried to do this, so if I'm here, so strong times, strong times. If I tried to do this here, he's gonna push me away and he's gonna get, uh, probably get his guard back. So what I wanna do is, let's go back. I wanna shut down his ability to push me. So I go over here. Push and connect my hands. And now I'm going to not try to open up his legs. I'm just going to walk 
my foot up. Now I go here. Now I can, I usually like to go to knee on belly here and then go to mount, but you can also go straight to mount. Okay? Let's go back. Let's go down. So if I, when I'm here, if, when I try to connect here, he's too strong with this, I can't get this. Instead, I'll take my left hand and I will chop over the top, like so, and take a near side under him. And now we're going to do the same thing, except now, I'll post him before. And now here, always pummel to the side opposite your under. Okay, let's look at that again. So first, what I tried to do, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, over here, go, go back. First, I tried to get this foot inside, walk my foot up, pop open the legs, and pass with an ankle first method. So the ankle first method is always my first option of passing through the half guard because more of your body is in contact with the floor, so you have a better base, right? Like, obviously the less of your body that's in contact with the floor, the weaker your base is. So when you do the knee first method, when I do the knee first method, I've got to get my hips up. So I have a weaker base. If I'm here, this is a very solid base, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of my body is touching the floor. But now, if I do the knee first, it's a little, it's a little bit weaker of a base, right? And when you're dealing with a really strong, like explosive guy, that, that difference can matter, right? So I'll always try the ankle first method if I feel like I can open up the legs. But if you can't, okay, especially if you are very sweaty, it can be easier to slide through. The knee first method is also very good. Okay, so let's go back. So I'm here. I wasn't able to get the legs open, so instead I'm going to switch to the knee first method. Okay? When I do the knee first method, I want to have good control of this arm. So I'm going to go over and I connect my hands like so. Okay, now he really can't do much with that arm. It's a really, really weak frame. Okay? Now I bring my hand forward, take my knee out, and my hips are coming in. Now I pull across. And I've completed, okay. yeah, yeah, I've completed a knee first pass through the half guard. So you've got ankle first and knee first passing through the half guard. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now let's look at what if. Okay, let's cut the foot. Now let's look at what if uh, uh, from here, walk back, what if from here you didn't have a body arm. Okay, there's an alternative strategy you can use. Okay? So from here I've got a tight waist and an arm here. This arm is gonna frame in one of two ways. On my hip or on the inside of my bicep. We've already looked at if he's on the inside of my bicep, I can karate chop into a near side underarm. Let's look at if he frames on my hip. If he frames on my hip, what I'm gonna do, and he usually will have a cross frame like he has here. If he has the same side frame, just go inside. It's really easy to beat. This is harder. Okay, we have the tight waist again. So I've got a tight waist, and he's framing on my hand. I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna bring it back, and I'm gonna grip the wrist. I'm gonna push it down like so. Now from here, if he does nothing, I take the elbow back, and then punch the main side out. And then we do the same stuff we did before. But usually, he's going to reach across. Yes, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm going to bring my chest forward and bring my chin down. Now we've trapped his elbow on that side of my body. When he goes to bring it back, it's difficult, OK? Now I take my left arm, I bring it back, and I catch this wrist. Now I bring my chin over here to trap the elbow even more. I dip my shoulder, elbow goes down. And I punch inside. Now from here, I take the tight waist out, connect my uh, hands to get a very, very good cross face and a far side underhook underneath the shoulder. See how my hands are underneath the shoulder? Now from here, we're going to pass 
through the half guard with a knee first method, and it's just it's just really really easy. So I go up, 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 up. And over here, this is like the easiest way to do this. When you're here at this point, a detail that I like to use: ten finger grip, elbow wide. That way, if he does, like let's say he bridges me this way, yeah, he could take me over. So if I go like this, he goes to do that. See that frame I have there? You don't need to unlock your hands. You can if you want. This this does work really really well. But you can also keep your hands locked like this. It's very hard for him to stop. Okay, so again. If I get to here, okay, and I don't have my body on, okay, this is something else we can do. I can grab the wrist, pin, he reaches across, up in the elbow back, I catch here. Oh, sorry, actually, I should say he reaches across. Before that, chest comes forward, and then down, then I go here. Then I go here, elbow goes back. Punch inside. I come up, and now we can pass through the half guard really, really easily. Okay. My knee was the first point of my leg that escaped his half guard, so it's a knee first method. Either there, or you can go to here, whatever you want. Okay? Make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. right, let's give this a try. Then we're going to come back and we're going to look at passing over the half guard. Okay, one, two, three. So, uh, let, let's make a, a very obvious point, but it's good to reiterate. So, we'll it back. so obviously, guys, if I'm passing through the half guard, the guard pass is completed when both halves of my leg get through his half guard, right? So when I say ankle first and knee first, what I mean is like what part of my leg is the first part that's getting through the half guard, right? Because ultimately, both halves have to get through. It's either going to be your knee or your ankle that first gets out of his half guard. Uh, each of these methods has an advantage. If I'm escaping his half guard through the half guard with my ankle first, more of my body is in contact with the floor and therefore it's easier to not get sweat from your base is better. Okay? So that's, that's going to be my preference. But the disadvantage of that is I have to open up the legs to get the space for that. Right? Because the ankle is kind of a wider area I need to get my ankle out first. So I've got to really open his legs very wide, which can be difficult if he's really strong or if he's bigger than you. Okay? The knee is easier to get that out first because it's, look, it's, this is already closer to this space. Right? If you look at my, my knee and my ankle, what's closer to getting out? It's the knee, right? So I need less space to get the knee out, but to get the knee out, I've got to raise my hips and there were less uh, my body is in contact with the floor, my base is not as good, right? So there's trade-offs trade -off, trade with each, okay? Um, yeah, just, just understand the trade-offs of each of these, okay? Now let's look at passing over the half guard, okay? So let's say, so we move, yeah, this time we see it. Okay, let's say we're here. Over his ankle. Okay, but obviously it's not a knee cut. You're not going with his knee. 
eight going over his ankle. But that's the same kind of thing. Okay? You guys look at my hip is very open here on my right side. What I'm gonna do is I 
many different things can happen.